your attention. How is everyone doing? We're going to start the Game Reviewer panel. As you know, all of us are well-known game reviewers. Uh, I'm going to start with Anthony, who can introduce himself. Hi, my name is Anthony. I go by Anthony. It was on. Oh, Hello. Oh, Turning it on. There we go. Difference. I turned it off. That was the issue. Um, so, I'm Anthony. I go by Ant Dude, and I review, uh, if you've seen any Kirby videos, it was probably me. Uh, ROM hack compilations, probably me. Uh, and most of the Nintendo stuff, but uh, yeah, so I do, I do a bit of reviewing. I've actually been reviewing games on YouTube for over 10 years. It's not just this channel, I've just been doing it for a long time. I'm an old, old timer. Oh yeah, I know the life, yeah. <laughs> my, my name is Jacob, I go by Alpharad online. Um, I don't have anything as iconic. Have you ever seen a video be like, that's good enough, that's probably me. <laughs> Take it, Alex. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Alex. Uh, I go by Relax Alex online, uh, and I do, I guess, design videos, and they're more of the form of review. I break down games, uh, characters, topics surrounding games. Uh, it's gotten into some weird topics lately, uh, but yeah, I like to have fun with my stuff. Uh, thank you for coming to our panel, everyone. You're the real champions here. Yeah, you have to applaud for yourselves right now. So this is just a general Q&A as far as we know, uh, and there's not a lot of you, so if you have any burning questions about anything that relates to YouTube, gaming YouTube, us specifically, I mean, this is this is why we're here. Uh, and these guys, I don't know how often they come to Canada, so it's the only time, yeah. This is my first time, and last. All right, yeah. I'm just kidding, I'll be back. Let's start off with the front, or the second row right here. How are you enjoying Canada on the topic? You don't get to answer this, Alex. He's asking, how do we enjoy Canada? Uh, haven't how? Heard, haven't, haven't had fruit tissue. It's on now. Can I say the answer I want to say? Just okay. Poutine's pretty cool. <laughs> Canada money is pretty. Wait, what happened to the other mic? It just stopped working. Uh, I love Canadian money. Yeah, Canadian money is red. Is red. I have a $20 bill from last year that I just show off to people. Uh, and, and Looney's and Toonies would be like, dude, it's pretty cool. And no pennies. And they're like, <laughs> it's convenient, it's very streamlined <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> Nothing. They, they, they just they round up. Down. Yeah, I or bought something for three twenty three today and they did not give me a penny. I was like, that's incredible. <laughs> that's a lot more wallet space. <laughs> if I have like ten bills in my wallet in America, it starts to feel thick. And if I have ten bills here, it feels perfect. The plastic gets so thin. That's my experience in Canada. Thank you very much. It feels clean even though it probably has just as many germs on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do we have another question? Anyone? Any and all questions. What about you? Oh, cat is, uh, my sister's watching him right now. He's at home. I don't know what he's doing. He's probably sleeping. Doing the cat things. The I tell everyone that's like, oh, how's your cat? He's literally, as the character I put in the video, he is just as much as an ass as a cat, he's just as like, if you could like look at him and he's like, he's looking, he's judging me every time he looks at me and it just feels that way. But he's good, he's good, he's healthy. And I think he said everything I wanted to say on that question. <laughs> well, my, my cat's cat. named Cat. My cat. Oh, I, that was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> my cats are doing well. If you guys know Major Duncan, my good friend, he is uh, house-sitting for us, taking care of all the cats and sending us videos. All right, any other questions? Green shirt. Um, this is a question specifically for Andude. I heard you mention um, Windows Movie Maker yeah, in the yeah. earlier. Have you ever actually used it to edit videos? Uh, I, well, I said I've been, I've been making reviews for a long time. I used the, the process back in 2007 when there were no standards. Um, a PS2 iToy that had codecs to be used as a webcam and then just import that stuff into Windows Movie Maker. Boy. And I'm still here, so stick to your dreams. But yeah, Windows Movie. I, I wish it was still around. Just I, make me. I did like brawl AMVs on Windows Movie Maker. Hell yeah! Yeah, to like Sonic 2006 music. It's always Sonic. Yeah. yeah. I uploaded Roblox videos <laughs> and RuneScape videos in 2008, and Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, yeah, those are dark days. Any other questions? What's the best time of the week to upload? What's the best time of the week to upload? That is a hard question. The, yeah, there it is. I, I upload when it's done. Like, there's like, any, it's not I've given up. I have strategically found the most optimal time to upload a video. I, 
Well, I like to upload at about 3 p.m. Central because I like to think of surrounding time zones. Most of my viewers come from U.S. There are a lot of viewers outside of that, but uh, like 60, 70 percent come from U.S. So I try to accommodate for them. And I upload at 3 p.m. Central time, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time, which is 4 p.m. Eastern time. So I think that kind of covers a lot of things. People, you know, my viewer demographic is primarily the age between 12 to 820. That's kind of like a comfortable age. And I think that's when they get out of school. And then if in California's time, that's when people are at lunch. So I think it kind of covers a nice variety of time zones because you can't cover everything everywhere. But I think 12 or like, and that range is good for the weekdays, and then weekends you can kind of upload a little earlier. Is is the strategy I think? Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's basically it. Yeah, when you it's just based on demographics, and it's usually it tends to go younger. So you just aim for school, and because that's what I did. When I when I got home, I immediately go jump right onto YouTube to see what was there, and then homework and all that stuff. So that's just what I guess we figured out what works. So yeah, I typically do the same thing. Uh, like I say, like sometimes it's just hard to pick a day of the week, but if it happens to be on the weekend, then you can be a little more uh, free with when you upload it. I just try to do like on the hour, like it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, just like always three schedule. o'clock, four o'clock, and just do it after the hour, like the three o one, you know. No, the, the optimal, the truly optimal. You can't schedule it for it, but three o one is like the optimal because if you want to be the top of the sub box, everyone schedules it for three p.m. So if you do three o one, you're top of the sub box, yeah. And if you like schedule for like two forty five, then you get beat out by everyone who up schedules at three. So you always want to do on the hour or right after the hour, right? And. Yeah, no, that's good. It's meta. Then when everyone does that, then we get to 302. <laughs> yeah, all right. You have a question? Yeah, you guys have probably in, uh, reviewed a bunch, a bunch of different types of games, but like, have you guys uh, ever uh, reviewed like the any of the Sega Game Gear games, or would you ever uh, look at uh, like reviewing some of those ones, especially how it's like set up, how it was created, or what went into it? For the Game Gear or the... The Game Gear. I am, uh, I'm too young for that. I never played it, so I, I would, because I have an interest in um, collecting these sorts of things, but it, the thing with collecting, you get, once you start, you can't stop with a lot of these consoles, and a lot of it interests me in a lot of the history of consoles and how uh, games and characters have grown past, so I'd like to like look at Sonic on the Game Gear. That's one of the reasons I'm interested in Game Gear, but currently not right now because Kind of pricey to get into that stuff. I don't know. Maybe I. I do you have game? I, no, no. It's emulated. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no reason why I haven't, and on the same coin, I really have no reason why I would. It's a little out of demo, out of like the standard content. So it's one of those things. There, there's no reason either way. So I don't really have a good answer. But I, for that reason, I'm not against it. <laughs> so, Sonic's always an easy. I need to. I need to make a video. I guess I'll make another freaking Sonic video. Uh, there's like 12 games, Sonic games on the Game Gear. Yeah. Or something insane. But yeah, I don't know enough about the Game Gear to say. I just know the Master System is like a console Game Gear. Yeah. I think I said about it. That's all I know. Yeah. Not necessarily the one that got the best reviews, but what was your favorite video to produce on your channel for all three of you? Uh, I've been asked this a lot, so I kind of have a prepared answer. Um, I don't know what it is, but I think I got really lucky because all the videos that I've enjoyed the most are within my top 10 most viewed videos. And it's really strange to me that that's true because I feel like some of the videos I love doing the most were off-brand. Um, I think in November of 2016 or December, I don't know. I made a video with uh, Ouija the God and Tervis, and we played Castle Crashers. So it was just one edited video of the whole adventure of Castle Crashers, and it was about like 16 minutes. Um, or that's maybe like 20 minutes, I don't know. But it was one of the most fun videos to make, one of the most fun videos to edit, had a lot of heart in it, and it was completely off-brand for my channel. But it still raked in like little, almost two million views, and then I think between that video and Pokemon Sun in 20 minutes, the whole Pokemon Sun journey wrapped up into 20 minutes. Again, off-brand, but it did really well. And I think it's probably those, and then my Odyssey Supercut are probably, no, I'm gonna say not Overwatch, because that really started it at all. Those three videos are in the top 10, and I'm happy for them, and I also love making them, so it's crazy how that worked. So I do have an answer for this. It was my uh, uh, Super Mario Strikers video that I made last summer, and I think the reason was that 
we were in Cuba, and I was like in Cuba, I should make a video on this game, it would be really fun. And it was really just like a, a passion video that got popular and I didn't expect it to, and I was really happy that the video did get as popular as it did. Because I really liked that Mario Strikers game, I would like play with friends and we would just, you know, just no reason to play just as friends. Uh, and that video, I like just delivered the topic. There wasn't, there wasn't a point. I didn't feel like I had to hook anybody in with the video. I was just like, I like this game. Here's all the reasons I like it. Uh, I danced in the video. I just, it was just fun. It was really fun for me to make. Uh, and that video also got popular, and a lot of people found my channel through that. And it's like, wow, I feel like I can just make a topic on anything. So it was both good that it got received well, um, but also I had a lot of fun making it. The editing was fun. The live sections were goofy. Uh, it really cemented what I'm doing now, which uh, I'm happy about. So it's actually sort of a similar, because it, it was a successful one, but the Sonic ROM hack video that I did, because I enjoyed making it, because I played a lot of Sonic ROM hacks growing up, and no one was talking about it, so like, I could probably do this, and then out of nowhere, it has like over 3 million views now. I don't ask questions about as to why, um, and, and many people would watch it. But yeah, that one, because it's a part of my childhood that I got to claim as my niche now, I guess. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. We're fortunate enough to where one of fav our favorite videos also happened to be pretty successful. Yeah. So, that's yeah, no, probably that one. All right, who else has a question? Here. Uh, what game are you hoping to get a sequel in the future? Like, um, what game are we hoping to get a sequel in the future? Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, give me a second. I want another Ace Attorney game. They're sitting on yeah. the franchise for a little bit now. There was one. On, there were two on 3DS, but I just I'm hankering for more. Oh, in spite of the last question, or related to it, Mario Strikers. It's yes. a really a really good series, and they haven't made another one. They made enough golf, tennis, uh, a sports mix, but not soccer. And soccer is the most popular sport on the planet, so I don't see why there's not another Mario Soccer. I, I think I had to go for this game on the GameCube called Amazing Island. Yes. Okay, people have heard of that. That's, I, that was my childhood. I played that game religiously, and it was more of a one and done, kind of weird niche type of game. It, the, I saw that Blockbuster to really date this story, and the back of it said, It's Yu Gi Oh! meets Pokemon meets Mario Party. And I was like, Huh, sign me up. <laughs> but yeah, so any other questions? Uh, this is for Jacob, but um, what was the process of you joining uh, Panda Global? Like, how did you get? Into okay, so for those of you who don't know, I'm the creative director and co-owner of an esports org named Panda Global, and the process for that is actually kind of funny. I started more of a, like a content consultant. They had me, and I would answer questions about like how do I optimize content in terms of metadata, or just I have my ear close to the ground, and the owners do, so they would ask me questions <laughs> about what what are the kids like, and you know stuff like that, but I, it, it was really funny because I had no idea how to formally start something with an eSports org, so I sent them a, uh, a shitpost video of mine and on my YouTube of Overwatch, and I applied for their Overwatch team. And then they said, are you the real Alpha Rat? And I was like, yeah, I'm actually not interested in Overwatch, this is just to break the ice. And it worked out! <laughs> so then we had a few more meetings, and I was like, content consultant for like a, a year and a half. Then they wanted to bring me on as an owner to be a little more involved, and I handle a lot of stuff in that. It's honestly like a third job, pretty much. But it's a whole lot of fun. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Any more questions? We could just talk, oh, yes. Um, well, one for all of you guys, like, how did you get into, like, like you don't just wake up one day and say, like, I'm gonna start reviewing games. So, like, how did you get into doing reviewing? What made you want to do it? I always liked talking to my friends about games they haven't played. And be like, this is a good game, you should play it. And then they'd come over and play it. And then when YouTube was a thing, I saw other kids were doing it too. And I was like, I, I could probably do this and give it a shot. And obviously it's growing and growing. Uh, the amount of production value goes into these things now. Um, that, 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 that's what started it. It was like, here's a game, you should play it. Like, that's for me. Um, I have been on the YouTube grind since it debuted. Like, when YouTube came out, I was all over that. I was uploading all of my Roblox, my Toontown, my RuneScape videos. I was doing anything I could. And, you know, I just, I had off and on passion to like doing YouTube. I would try it for six months, nothing happened. I'd go off and do other things for like two years, then come back. 
But eventually it just stuck and I've always wanted to be involved with this. Like this is honestly a dream come true, but I think it's just I mean, I, I think that answers your question, honestly. I just wanted to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much in the same boat as Jacob, where I was on YouTube when it first came out. It always, like, intrigued me, because you'll see, like, I was one of those people that watched Smosh when they first came out. I'm like, wow, these guys are making videos and people are watching them. That's always so interesting. So I've always been a YouTuber's YouTuber, where I watched uh, a lot of game reviews, like the Angry Video Game Nerd, like, when he was just uploading, like, when he started. Um, John Tron when he first started, Ego Raptors cartoons, so a lot of those people uh, for sure have impacted me and I'm like, if they can do this and talk about the things they like, I have things I would like to share. So I, I initially started with something else, but I've more of went into game reviewing and talking about things about game and breaking them down. So I, I think that's where it started because I saw that other people were doing it and I'm like, this seems really fun. It's something I've really always wanted to do ever since I knew you could do it and that got me to where I am right now. Uh, funnily enough. <laughs> Uh, do we have any more questions? Yeah, front row. So this one's for Alex and Alfred. Um, I found out about you guys through like a lot of Smash Bros. videos. I know you guys make a lot of those, yeah. and I'm pretty into that. So I was wondering. I, I think there's a Smash Bros. event of some sort going on here. Maybe just like a little hangout. At is there something going on at Con Bravo? It's up for you. Yeah. Would it, Would you guys want a money match? Or be up for it? So I. I heard <laughs> I talk about Smash, or did. I am garbage. <laughs> I'm not that good. I mean, okay, I'm better than like the average Joe, but like, I'm not that good. I don't play anymore like as much as I used to. Maybe with Ultimate when it comes out, I'll try and play it more, but I found myself not really into like competitive games like that. But I mean, I'll, I'll play. Like, I, I'll play Smash any day of the week. Well, I'm the best of my group of friends, and <laughs> as everyone says. Best of my grade. Um, yeah, I, I've, I'll just play with you. It doesn't yeah. have to be a money match. I, I think a lot of people think, like, I'll give you money if we play. And I'm like, oh, we can just play. <laughs> and also, it gives me a reason because if, if somehow you win, you get to say you beat Alfred in a money match the whole time. So I, I don't want that. I don't want the off chance of that happening. But, anyways, like, yeah, no, if there's someone around, I'll play and I don't have panels or anything. Okay. But, yeah, any other questions? Right here. What are some, what are some of your favorite non gaming YouTubers if you have any? I watch a lot of food cooking channels, honestly, because I cook, that's my main hobby outside of uh, making videos is cooking. So as much as BuzzFeed gets like a negative stigma, boy, I love Tasty so much. I love that channel. Uh, so, and we used to have a big thing for the food review uh, guys in their cars in the front seat just reviewing food super loud. It's just so weird, but isn't everything we do on this channel, on this platform weird? So. That's mine. Um, I watch a lot of music YouTubers. Um, most of my background is in music. I was in a couple bands in the past. I, I play a few instruments. So I would say a lot of the channels I watch outside of gaming are typically music related. I would say I watch music related YouTubers more so than gaming actually. But, Fantano? Huh? Anthony Fantano? I don't know. He reviews music. Oh, I don't watch music reviews. I just watch like music oh. channels. Like I like to watch people who create music and like do covers and stuff like that. I don't watch any reviews. I don't really watch reviews genre. I'm in the wrong panel. But <laughs> um, other than gaming, I tune in for a lot of anime like YouTubers. Like every now and then, some of them when Dragon Ball Super was still premiering, I would watch channels that talked about that. Uh, there's Mother's Basement. There's like. I don't know, because I'm not really much of a YouTube viewer as much anymore, since I became one that makes stuff. I want to stay off the platform as much as possible if, uh, if I can. But uh, honestly, uh, there's like Philip DeFranco if I want to look at news, and then anything else is like compilations from the Eric Andre show, or just anything of the sort. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. Or it's compilations of other uh, gamers like playing stuff. Just, just background noise for when I'm editing. <laughs> Yeah, any more uh, questions? Yes. Less of a question, more of an idea sure. for Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I, just, I just started getting into Pikmin. Uh huh. And uh -huh. I love your not series. Yeah. I thought maybe making not Mario 128. <laughs> that, that's that's very stretch. niche. Um, <laughs> the Notch series, I, I like to have... It's quite a stretch, but 
So. Yeah, I, I'm pretty picky on what I include to the Knot series. You wouldn't think that because of how shameless a lot of it looks. But I have some pretty high standards for it. And a lot of people like to say, do Hat in Time and call it Not Mario Odyssey. And I'm like, I like Hat in Time. So I don't really like to do it because the game is the series is supposed to be me dragging games and pointing out all the flaws and stuff like that. But it it doesn't really work like that because Pikmin is honestly a good and well designed game. So the joke of it not being March 128, which was a uh, a test demo for the GameCube to show what they can do, it was a globe with 128 Mario's running around just doing shit. I don't know, but it was just to show that GameCube is stronger than the 64. But I mean, I'm interested in making Pikmin, but I don't think I would do it under that circumstance. Yeah. But anyways, next question. Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. You. You got. You want the race. Another question specifically for Anthony. So. How in the heck did you find out about Buff Bumble? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of knew about it because everyone knows the DK rap, and people would also then subsequently talk about the Buff Bumble yeah. rap. The only one who ever talked about it before is I think Pro Jared. Did like a, a top ten bees. Um, yeah, that's the only way you were talking about. Yeah, and I, my best friend was like, I got the game complete in box. Do you want it? I was like, sure. What the hell? Why not? And then a month later, I was like, it clicked. It's a game no one knows what the hell it is, and it's like a third person flying shooter. It's weird. It has a good multiplayer mode. And I was like, oh, okay, it's not a terrible game. Why not? Has anyone else played Buck Bumble in this room? Yeah, man. Y'all gotta catch up. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. How do you think um, YouTube has changed now in the past? <laughs> like, you can even go like six questions. months for new Just YouTubers. Like people starting out, it, it, it seems like it's a lot harder to. But maybe it, I don't know. Not, that's not a question. <laughs> uh, it's harder in the sense of it's saturated now. Yeah, yeah. Every game and console has been done. AVGN got huge because Atari 5200, what, what is that? Um, harder in this, because no, the only way to promote is now via yourself. Yeah. Uh, and you're, you're throwing like a dime into a, not just a bucket, but the ocean uh, and just hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. um, I, this could be a topic that can honestly be elaborated on for hours. On yeah, it. a lot of it is like, making content has become so accessible like for example people can make videos just from their ps4 they can like record something and then put it from online their and their phones you can stream off of your phone you can do a lot with the technology that we have available today so it's just a matter of anyone can make a video now anyone can put stuff online and it's so accessible that it makes it so it's hard for anyone to start getting into it and make big content and i think that's probably the biggest thing because even back maybe five years ago it was much easier to get out there with your gaming reviews but now I, I know a lot of people who do gaming reviews very much similar to myself or Anthony, even Alpha Rat. They make content on the same wave. And it's just hard to stand out. It doesn't, and a lot of time it doesn't matter how good the content is. It doesn't matter if like you have something revolutionary to say. It's, it's just really hard to stand out and you have to find other ways to trickle your way in to find an audience. Uh, it definitely has been made a lot harder. I do think it's still possible, though, mm -hmm. if you are passionate about what you're talking about. A lot of it's just consistency and time. And it's always it's the worst answer ever because every, there's no magic way to just get big. It's, it's, there's the odd Jake Paul, but I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'll offer a little bit of hopefulness because I, when I started YouTube, my channel really launched in January of 2015. Like I was doing YouTube long before, but that's when it blossomed, and. Every moment before that, I mean, I thought YouTube was oversaturated because even in like 2009, like it still feel, felt like, oh, the big people are already kind of doing what I want. Like there's always going to be room for someone else just up here. Yeah. And it might not feel that way because it's intimidating and daunting, but it's completely possible. And outside of that, there are still new ideas to be possible. Like, I don't know if I assume most people have heard of the channel The Tear Zoo. It's it's a very good channel. It's more of it's the subtitle is real life's best gaming channel, and it analyzes things like are humans OP, and it gives it like stat class breakdowns. And there's a video of like the tier list of spiders across the world, and it analyzes them as if it's a video game. And it's really humorous, but that's such a unique and original idea that the channel blew up. The channel started earlier this year, and it's already at like 900,000 subscribers. 
Yeah, so if you have a unique idea, it carries you far. Yeah, I think a lot of that is like, people are like, oh, there's no way. But then I'm seeing channels these days, uh, someone called Nakey Jakey, he just, oh, I love Nakey Jakey. yeah, he, he's doing game reviews, but just the way he presents it and the way he structures his videos, it's just a breath of fresh air. And honestly, I think that's it's all it is. You can really stand out if it's the way you're presenting. And if you just find, because everyone has the struggle of finding that one video that reaches a certain audience, but when you find that, it, it's really telling that you could really make a difference. He's the first one I think of, but there are other people for sure. That's all I got, I just echo your guys' love. <laughs> all right, any more questions? Uh, yeah, you in the white shirt. Um, out of the other YouTubers that you kind of admire, who would you want to meet the most? Mm, I definitely want to, yeah. I definitely would like to meet uh, Aaron Hansen or Eager Raptor because he's probably the only person right now, right? Like, I'm like, I would still have that starstruck in my mind, like, oh my, that's, he, and because I've watched the guy since he did animations 10 years ago, so it's, it would be a hard thing to like come to grips, but I think after the initial, I'd like to talk to him because he's really knowledgeable, he's a great businessman, and he's also a great entertainer, doing a lot well for himself, and if I were to be like, oh, I want to see what I can learn from him, but also just get to know him because he seems like a swell guy. I'm really mad because of the exact same answer. <laughs> <laughs> I too watched Eager Raptor on Newgrounds, and... <sighs> If I had a microphone first. No, I, I feel the exact same way. I have watched Eager Raptor transition into YouTube. I've seen him transition into Aaron from Game Grumps and and to music. That's that's a wild one. It's Eager Raptor has constantly been this little source of inspiration for me. And even though like it's now in Let's Plays and things like that, you have to realize that the Game Grumps thing is only like a fraction of what he does. He does so much, and it's honestly really inspirational. He, he does so much, and it's crazy to me. So if I could meet anyone, it'd, it'd be Aaron Hansen in terms of like the YouTube realm, and it, he blows my mind. Like it, It's crazy. Definitely echo that, because obviously we've all been watching him for a while. Uh, just, <laughs> uh, just for someone different, so I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of YouTube game reviewers. Um, some of my inspirations, like Pro Jared, some call me Johnny, Davey GN. The new one that's on the rise, Scott the Waz. Yes. He hasn't showed up anywhere yet. But <laughs> he was, but now I want to meet him. Boy, I do too. I do too. he's 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 the man. Yeah, he's, he's so good. Ask him to bring Polybius. Polybius. Polybius? Uh, so you're probably him just because he's funny. I don't want to meet him because like, oh, you're popular now. But he just seems like a genuinely cool dude. So yeah, let's say him. I don't know if no one has asked this yet. If you could guarantee to ask one, uh, add one character to Smash Ultimate, who would it be? Oh, I want to hear this. Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. Lando from Fire Emblem. Be careful what you wish for. I don't. <laughs> if, if you guys don't know, I love Lynn from Fire Emblem. Well, Bayonetta was the one character I wanted in Smash 4. And she ruined the Smash 4 game, so you have to be careful what you wish. I would take that for a win. That's a win for you. Yeah, I got my I got my dream girl in Smash, and that's good. But now I'm just I was like, all right, now let's try and get Lin in. And then they announced there's an assist trophy, and I was like, well, this is fine. Do you think Nintendo was aware that you really wanted it? No, I don't think Nintendo gives a damn what I think. <laughs> um, but now I'm kind of casting my vote to Shantae. So Sans from Undertale would be. I think, <laughs> But honestly, uh, I've always wanted Paper Mario, because uh, that'd be a really, I think the design would be really cool. Sonic the Hedgehog is already in, that was like my dream character way back in the day, so that's already happened and nothing really can like blow me away. So I really want Paper Mario because I really like that series of games, except maybe the new one. You know, the one before, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's it, I haven't really thought too hard about who else. Oh, Joker from Persona would be really cool. That's, that's my dream character that will probably never happen. And Goku from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they're American. They, they think it's so crazy that Z is the right way. <laughs> That'll be our next panel. <laughs> but I'm gonna just touch one more thing. One character I want, like, ultimate, if they do DLC, is a Xenoblade 2 rep. Yes. Because they closed, the, Sakurai did a column where he said that the design document for Smash Ultimate was closed in 2015, which was before they finalized the designs for Xenoblade 2 characters. So it looks 
pretty impossible for a Xenoblade 2 character to be in the base game. But if they decide to do DLC, I feel like it's one of the first choices they do. So I'm hopeful for the future, but eh, we'll see. You want Ditto, okay. <laughs> I'll right try, who would you pick from Xenoblade 2 if you could? How, who would I pick from Xenoblade 2? I, I actually want to put my tinfoil hat on for a second and talk about this. <laughs> um, so, if Xenoblade 2, if anyone of you played or have played Xenoblade 1, the game's, the combat's not similar at all. Um, this guy has a weird looking sword up here, so. But, I, they reintroduced Pokemon Trainer, which only furthers this theory I had, which uh, Pokemon Trainer sits in the background and he sends out uh, Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard, and you rotate through those. I think it would make a lot of sense because in, there's a, the main character is Rex, and he has a blade named Pyra, who is also sometimes Mithra. Spoilers. <laughs> and they have different, uh, they have like the same normals, but like different abilities. So I would think it would be really cool if you had Rex in the background, and you had or if you had like, no, you had Rex in the foreground fighting, and you have like Pyra and Mithra in the background, and like, he had the same normals, but if you press like down B to switch between Pyra and Mithra, then like your up B, neutral B, and side B change. So like, it doesn't change the whole set, but it would change it slightly. Maybe Pyra has more knockback, but Mithra does more damage. So I think something like that would be a unique move set. It's really appropriate. An Echo Fighter. An Echo? Who? He has nothing Mithra with. with Rex, and then Pyra with Rex. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Sagari, don't do don't it so me. He did Dark Man. He, I like her a lot, but I mean, when, when does a side character get in over the main he character in Smash? No, don't do that. The, that. He does not throw the girls at them. That's not how <laughs> Xenoblade works. It's close to how Xenoblade works, but it's not quite. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. That's enough Smash Halloween. You should be in Smash. Next question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, for someone with a smaller YouTube channel, mm -hmm. when I upload a video, I try and share it on Twitter. Right. Is there anything else you could recommend? Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, English. I heard Twitch, so... Twitch, Twi no. Um, so, I, I share it on Twitter to see, like, obviously everyone who shares that is good. Does that become less important over time, like, if your channel does grow? Like, I get the feeling, is it like a snowball effect? Like, once your channel picks YouTube is a snowball, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you don't know when it's going to happen. It just does. Yeah. A lot of the time. I, I think our last panel I was saying, uh, the way I started, I sh shared on Smash boards for Smash Bros videos, because I started yeah, with, like, analysis. Like, when I, sh like, I used to share that on Reddit, yeah. but now, anytime anyone, like, I share on Reddit, it's just slammed. Immediately. Well, like, I got my no start on Reddit. The, the bigger yeah. you grow, the more Reddit hates you because, yeah. well, you're popular. <laughs> and But if you post something, they don't want you to say, hey, look at my video. Oh. But if you get other people to post their videos for you, yeah. it goes over a whole lot better. Yeah, which is, for I've some reason. Had that, and the follow up question would be have you had a video that isn't necessarily what you normally make? And it's really disappointing that that's the one that gets noticed. Because yes. I've had it happen three times now. And it's just, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I guess I, I have a series called The Not Series, but it's a pretty consistent series, but there was one episode that was different than the entire series. Mm. Now, I just thought it'd be funny. It usually had me playing this game and me making jokes about the game, but there is it, this one video called Absolutely Not Overwatch, and I found a website for this Chinese bootleg of Overwatch <laughs> featuring characters like Soldier 7259, <laughs> and um, there, there was a Widowmaker character that looked a lot like Black Widow, named uh, Black Widowmaker, and it, it doesn't go over well. It, it's a lot. It's a whole lot of stuff going on. But I just read off this website, just naming all the characters, laughing at them. They, they had like a character who looks just like Lucio in tracer clothes. They have a character who is Mercy but looks like Diva. Like it's it was hilarious, and that got like top of the R slash Overwatch, which if you know anything, that's a huge subreddit. So that video. Usually my videos, they can get like maybe 100, 200,000 views in 24 hours, but this hit like 400,000 views in like four hours. Like it was insane. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Alex. Um, does anyone know the channel Gilva Sunners? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I did a, I did like a top 10, but the title was just like the top or top 15 gaming songs that you've been hearing all wrong, which is the dumbest title ever. <laughs> it's like not even clickbait. It just doesn't even make sense. And the thumbnail had a like a, it was DK64 and it had sands in the thumbnail and it had the red circle. It's like <laughs> it was the most like clearly putting it to be, but it was 
one of, it was a really successful video I had in 2015, and for some reason, I'm like, why did this do well? This is dumb. Like, it was really for fun, and it was a top 15 of all these songs from that channel, which Give Us Sunner is, uh, they just take gaming songs, and they title it, like, regular songs on YouTube, so if you're searching for, like, Mario Sunshine Secret Level, they put that as the same title, but the song is not what you expect it to be, and it's a parody song, and they, their channel's huge now, they have so many uploads, but I essentially did a top 10 of that with all these goofy songs, and I didn't tell the viewers that the top 10 was not what it appeared to be until like the end. Uh, and it did well, I'm like, why did this do well? So I followed up with it, but I haven't done it because it's just kind of lame. <laughs> oh yes, uh, any more questions? Yeah. Um, I have a question for um, Alpha Kurt. You said you've judged, uh, you've, so I got the name wrong. Um, you said you've done instru uh, you played instruments before. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so if you uh, were ever able to do like a cover of games theme song or something, like what what game theme would you really want to do a cover of? Uh, if you ever did a cover. Yeah, I don't know. I've definitely thought of that because I like music and I like learning video game songs on instruments. I would probably. You know, I'd probably pick a song from like Xenoblade or something because the soundtrack is something I hold on to a lot. I can't really say what song it could be, but I know it could be from the probably Xenoblade 2 soundtrack. More ordained. Probably yeah, more ordained. ordained. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Any other questions? Let's go right here. Yeah. Um, so it, there's a lot of it seems to be a lot of success with. Uh, Editors, so you know, you have Barry Kramer, uh, you have Matt and Ryan from Super Mega, mm -hmm. and uh, now you're uh, seeing uh, Farfetch, I think his name is. He's doing, I think, stuff for either Arlo or Paydox. Yeah. So I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, uh, like, if you think that there's like a, a career path in sort of being an editor for other. YouTuber. Okay, okay. So you're saying being, you're not the face of the channel, but you are an editor. Um, I think so. I have an editor who doesn't work on all my videos. I take a lot of pride in editing. And usually I let him edit a video, then I revise it to my standards, which, you know, still saves me about six to eight hours of work. So I think being an editor for YouTube is really easy. That is honestly a career choice if you go for a big editor because I'm sure like the super mega boys who edit for Game Grumps get paid pretty well. And then they have their own channel on top of that. Because usually people who edit for bigger channels are also streamers or YouTubers who aren't too big, but they do that in their spare time because I definitely give my editor a livable income alone. So it's definitely possible to find a career as a YouTube editor for a channel that's not your own. I would say it's just hard because uh, a lot of what uh, YouTubers should pay you out like an accurate livable wage, but the reality is they a lot of YouTubers who are not at like the high levels, like say Game Grumps, they they really can't afford that within their budgets typically, unless maybe they have a Patreon or something where they can do that. So I would say it is, but it's very hard to find those jobs. They're very limited to find an editor, and also the workload of an editor is not healthy unless if you have dabbled in editing it's not very healthy and it's not not very fun either so that's why I'm hesitant to say like people are finding a job for not channels that aren't like multimedia like Game Grumps they're huge now so they can afford editors pay them correctly and then those editors can go on I think Farfetch I don't know did he do anything for Game Theory I feel like maybe not not sure I don't know for sure but I've heard the name but uh, that would be the only way to do it, but you could definitely, a lot of what YouTube is, or a lot of any media like uh, that people get into, a lot of it's springboarding off of the people you know and working for others and collaborating. It's a big way to help you grow, learn, and eventually help yourself uh, grow your own audience. And considering a lot of YouTubers don't have a consistent pay, uh, if when January comes around and we just start making peanuts, <laughs> We just have to, it, it, then we would come to the editor as well, and that's, that just adds a lot of pressure to what we do, because not, not only can we have to pay ourselves, we have to pay for someone else too, during the dry spell, it just adds a lot of extra stress. So I, it, it's probably possible, depending on where you go, but you'd be freelancing, to, you'd have to like probably be an editor for three or four channels, because I know people who actually do that. I would say one possibility is uh, editing stream highlights because I think streamers are a little 
they're fine with paying out of pocket for YouTube because this is a whole other medium they want to grow. Because I know a lot of streamers who said, all right, if you grow this channel, you get 100% of the revenue. And then when it gets bigger, they're like, all right, well, I'm going to take like 30% of it. And then if it gets bigger, they're like, oh, 50, because you, which is fair. But the thing is that I think streamers are really missing out on YouTube. So I think it's very easy to talk to, like even streamers in the top 100, top 200 streamers can definitely use this service. So I think if you want to, if you're looking in that, going after streamers and offering highlight content is probably the best way to go. Yeah, that's probably the best type of content. Like a lot of editing that takes like long periods of time, probably not because it's very volatile for videos like that. But streamers, like that's money they could be making and you could be making and it's a good way to get your foot in, I think. But just yeah. for example, like how did you find your editor? Uh, he's just a friend of mine. Like that's the thing. So I, if someone, I've gotten several emails saying I want to edit for you, and I'm like, I don't know you. But it's I like working in house, so I can work over his shoulder. If he, I he finishes a project and I get to revise it, I don't think I would ever be comfortable with having someone do all the work and not letting me touch it. And I think a lot of YouTubers are the same way because I I know Alex doesn't have an editor because it's he has a vision for his stuff, and for the most part I do too. And it's really hard to convey your vision to someone else, but streamers, I'm saying like, their vision is for their stream, and you can carry out your own vision for their YouTube. So that's why I think streaming is a little easier, because YouTubers kind of have this perfectionist mentality, they want things done their way, and that's the truth. So even though my editor does a lot, I still revise it, so it's still my content and not his. More question? Yes. Uh, Jacob, who do you want on the clickbait series the most? Um, who do I want on the clickbait series? Like, that's like a co yeah, so I have a series where I make clickbait thumbnails in Photoshop, and I usually have a co-host, so it's like a little, little weird little talk show. I'm really open to anybody who wants to hop on. You want to hop on there one day? Okay, cool. Alex has already stepped up there, so we, he can't hop back on. But I, I've talked to a few people in the past who are bigger than me who want to be on it, which is really flattering, honestly. So I think I might have more people in the future. I might bring the series back, honestly, but um, I, I can't really pinpoint it to one person. I mean, I guess since we talked about Ego Raptor in the past, I mean, that obviously makes sense, but it seems unrealistic. So honestly, anyone who wants to. <laughs> I'll be on your episode, it's cool. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. Uh, this is just a small question and mainly for my own sanity. Where did you get, how did you guys come up with your names? Uh, my name sucks. <laughs> I'll take that. Brown on the nose. Apparently no one calls Anthony Ant. That's not like a common nickname. It was for me, but I would tell people that and they'd be like, where the hell are you from? It's weird. Um, what? Normally it's Tony, yeah, but that's, um, I was an original. It was Ant. I'm a guy. It's dude. It's perfect. I know, it's genius, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's kind of, no, it's not that long. Uh, so, I go by Relax Alax. I know everyone does the rhyming username thing. Um, Alax, well, my name's Alex, but nickname I was called Alax, and it's not a great nickname. Like, who came up with it? I don't know. Someone, someone came up with it, and then just stuck as like a joke, but then it became the real thing. It's typically how jokes go, and then that just kind of, and then uh, I'm a pretty laid back person, like really just mellow, and it rhymed. So relax, relax, and no one, everyone gets it wrong, so. Well, um, I, I was in a, my pre-calculus class, which is the great start of every story. And we were working with Greek letters, as you do. And I was like, Delta, that's such a cool Greek letter, so I really want to go online, change my, I didn't really have a username at the time, I just kind of was Jacob Raven online. So I, I was like, Delta's a cool name. So I want to go by Delta, and of course I go home and change my Xbox Live name after I come to this realization. And I'm like, Delta, and of course that's taken, and I don't want to be Delta 78467, like it, so I was like, what, what's a cool word I can put after? So I was like, of course, Delta Rad. So I was Delta Rad for about a month, and then whenever you change your gamer tag, people were like, hey, who are you? I'm like, Jacob, and they're like, oh, okay, what's up? But, so a lot of people were saying, why do you change your name to that? Why, why do you change your name to Deltard? And I was like, <laughs> Well, I dabbled in other Greek letters, and eventually we got to Alpha Rad. So, not my first guess, but I like it so much more than Delta. So we're gonna go with that. If you ever go back to like the the old trope on YouTube of where you have like an alter ego, who just like 
<laughs> no, I'm gonna say Delta. You bring Del Delta right back, and that's your evil nemesis trying to stop you from reviewing video games. As I do. Any more questions? Yes. If a bigger, equally popular video platform came out, would you move your content over to it in contrast to YouTube? In our position, I think it just depends on monetization options because YouTube still just makes the most sense. We're down for competition. I think we can probably agree that competition is good for any any form of media. That's why it's it's nice that Twitch is actually sort of kicking YouTube in the ass a little bit. <laughs> like Twitch introduced their premiere feature for videos. Hey, YouTube just announced the same thing. Weird how that worked out. Uh, so it just depends if anyone can actually step up and be a proper competitor. But I think I think it's possible. Yeah, I think it's I think it's possible. Oh. I think it's possible. Uh, it's just, YouTube is owned by like Google. YouTube's been around for so long, so like trying to start something to that caliber and to compete with it would just be a huge undertaking. So it's interesting that Instagram, they're starting Instagram TV, so that could be a potential avenue. Um, maybe. Uh, I hope not Snapchat, but love, oh God. <laughs> but Twitch is looking like our uh, knight in shining armor. I hope, I hope. They premiere finicky, but if they, develop a lot more of the video side of Twitch, I think it could potentially be a good avenue. It just maybe getting out of gaming might be a problem. Twitch has been creating a whole lot of new things and YouTube has also been creating a whole lot of similar things. It's kind of the, the whole meme of the copying the homework and that's uh, make it different enough. Like instead of subscribes, make it sponsorships and now memberships. It's you, you want emotes and chat? Yeah, we can do that. So I think Twitch definitely has potential if they shine some things up, but as Anthony said, it's all about monetization, honestly. If I could go to another site that offers similar monetization, it, even that is still shaky because I'm not going to bring over 100% of my viewer base. That's impossible. Right. So I, I want to say I would be interested in it because even if I don't hop over, I'm just interested in YouTube having competition so they feel like they have to do better. Yeah. That's how it works. All right. I think we have one or two last questions, depending on how long these are. Oh. Right. What, um, what's yours? Sort of taboo. Um, for example, I kind of wanted to get into like the YouTube streaming thing, but I know there's a huge like, uh, maybe not that huge, but there's like a stigma, I guess, against female doing that sort of thing. And I'm wondering, like, I guess, what is your opinion on like how to overcome that kind of thing? If that's it's too taboo. I understand. No, I no uh, it's it's getting better. It's becoming more and more accepted. Don't call yourself a girl gamer. That's uh, that's one big thing. Don't don't yeah, you're a gamer. Like, yeah, don't consider yourself. I'm a girl the gamer. Um, yeah, it, it, everything is becoming more accepted of yeah. women doing things. So, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. The stigma is not as strong as it used to be. Uh, it, it, there's still going to be some jerks online because that's just part of it. But I, I, it's. I think becoming easier. You say you have a lot of opinions, so nice right. time. Think, uh, yeah, I I think it would be refreshing, like just because a lot of the people who do reviews, they're white guys with glasses like me. Like honestly, I think it would just be refreshing to have a different host, a different someone with a different perspective, because we all have different perspectives, and it's been a lot of the same sort of people. So I think it's actually maybe beneficial, but YouTube's still hard. It's not going to give you more of an advantage over other people. It's still going to take like content that people are interested in. And I don't think I don't think there's like a lot of stigma to be honest with you. There there are trolls online for a lot of it and and anyone that does online content, they have to overcome a lot of the trolls and a lot of the uh, the hardships that come with that. You have to build a thick skin. I think anyone has gone through that. So it, it's tough. It may be different because as you say, but I, I honestly think it's possible and it would be beneficial in the long run. It sounds strange to say this, but it's not taboo in the sense that you're doing something wrong. It's taboo in the sense that people think it's, 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 it's different. It's not the norm. It's a male-dominated industry, and nobody can deny that. But the thing that makes it taboo is that it's different and it's changed, and people don't like something different than they're used to. But I do think the community as a whole is getting more and more accept accepting. Not just the gaming community, but just the world in general. I would hope so. I mean, you would hope so. <laughs> but even in this beautiful transition of change and things becoming a bit more accepted from like LGBT, like each letter involved in that is becoming more and more accepted <laughs> as time goes on. So I think it's getting better, but I don't think it'll ever be perfect. 
I think in a male dominated industry between an anonymous mask, it's very easy to hurt and harm people. And unless we enforce some strange internet government laws, that's not going to change. People will always be anonymous. If you ban someone in Twitch chat, they can always make another account. And then you have all these other streamers saying that girl streamers are taking away their viewers. And how is that fair? <laughs> there are just idiots everywhere, okay? If you're passionate about what you're doing, I think that's going to shine through past, like, whatever it is. And that's, that's what I think matters. If you create quality content, yeah. if you create quality streams, people will come. You, people will come. It's, it's not a gimmick that you're a girl. You are a person, much like anybody else. You can create the same content as anyone else. And you're, it's not being special for that, and you're not being wrong for doing that. You should be treated as everyone else. And eventually, maybe we'll get there. And that's all we can hope for in the meantime. But I think we wrapped it all up. So thank you so much for coming to this panel. You're all fantastic. Thank you for coming. If you are so inclined to have free stickers up here, uh, just a little glasses logo, but yeah, come don't trample anybody, please. Yeah, no problem. Oh, and real quick, so, uh, real quick also, at 7 p.m., it's 7, right? Yes. The Q&A, or not Q&A, the autograph session for all three of us, uh, where is that at? That's a good question.